currently, squads are limited in their ability to understand their environment and to see potential threats. The height of their eyeballs determines what they can see. What Snipe does is it allows those units to understand beyond line of sight, to see potential threats, to decide how they should prosecute their mission and when they should prosecute their mission. My name is John Ross. Uh, I was the original program manager uh, for Snipe, and we're in the Snipe lab right now where we are putting together the last uh, units being delivered to the U.S. Army for the Soldier Born Sensor Program. Snipe's a differentiator for the warfighter because the consumer market is saturated with large, cumbersome, difficult to use quad rotor platforms. We try to take all those feature sets and distill them down into one small, easy to use, low cost platform. My name is Roger Shuck. I'm the hardware group manager and I'm the technical lead for Snipe. Snipe has a small form factor. The thing weighs less than 150 grams, fits in a small ruggedized case, can fly out to past the kilometer range, flies for 15 minutes, has removable batteries so you can do back-to-back -back flights, day and night capabilities, tilt to axis gimbal payload with a low light EO camera and a nighttime thermal camera. Snipe has a multi-core processor that it uses for onboard image processing. This allows it to do digital stabilization and provide feedback to point the camera. Well, with a system this small, when you're flying in wind, um, it's difficult to keep the aircraft perfectly stationary. So with the digital video stabilization, uh, we're able to take out the movements of the aircraft. I'm Carl Klingbeil. I was the GNC lead on Snipe, which is Guidance, Navigation, and Control. Well, Snipe's a much smaller system than any others that we've produced, so it's something that they could actually wear on their body. They can have with them at all times, uh, and it can be deployed very quickly. Uh, whether you're out at uh, even a short distance away, it's very hard to see visually. Uh, and, and detect audibly. If you fly a Puma for the Army, that's your job, that's your MOS. The guys that fly Snipe aren't necessarily UAV guys. They're guys with a UAV. And that's fundamentally different from our other products. It's gonna be something that they own. It's organic to them. They decide when it flies and where it flies. They don't have to wait for anybody's or ask anybody's permission to fly it. It augments their ability to do their job. The GCS is a ruggedized tablet which uses our DDL data link. A lot of thought went into the GCS for the Warfighter. It's a tightly integrated package. There's an integrated sunscreen, radio, and antennas. It's meant to be a very simple interface where uh, the user can be trained in a matter of a couple hours. There's an integrated simulator that allows users to get time on the system without risking any assets. An example of a mission for Snipe could be a squad is given a mission of doing reconnaissance on a structure on the top of a hill that apparently was abandoned, but reports indicate could be being used by insurgents. So the squad is supposed to go up there and clear that facility. The problem is it's at the top of a hill. There's no way to approach it without possibly being seen if somebody were inside. So Snipe could give that squad a 360 degree view, both in EO and IR, of the target, right? Both from the rooftop, through any open windows and doors, to give them confidence as they approach. Snipe provides something that I like to call tactical overmatch. So it allows a small unit to see first, know first, and act first. So small units are not surprised. 